everybody. Good morning. Welcome to the Triangle. It's wonderful to see you all this morning. Um, if there are any visitors, it's lovely to welcome you this morning. If it's your first time at the Triangle, I hope you feel part of the Triangle family. We're going to be thinking about the body of Christ this morning, and we are all part of the body of Christ. We're all part of the family of God in this place. Each one of us loved and valued and each one of us matter to God. So I'm just going to invite you just for a second just to say good morning to the person next to you who's part of the family and if you don't know them just share your name with them and say good morning. <laughs> presence and we're going to worship God together. So we're going to stand together and we're going to sing our opening hymn which is a really rousing, wonderful new hymn from the hymn book 377. It's called The River of God. It's 377. So rather than discuss what praise means this morning, I'll come back to that another day, we're going to do it this morning as um, thanks, sorry and please. Thanks, sorry and please. So I don't know whether anybody, I hope anybody, somebody has, has somebody got something that they would like to say thank you to God for this morning? Perhaps some news that's happened in your family this week. Doctor, say thank you for something, Joe. <coughs> no, no, that's all right. That's all right. Oh, well, you? Oh yeah. Um, for my birthday party. Birthday party? Have you just had a birthday? Uh, uh, no, it's for my friend's birthday party. Fantastic. Fantastic. That's a really good thing to be thankful for. Anybody else at the back want to say thank you for anything? Perhaps. <laughs> 
And I, yeah. and I used to warm up bed, particularly early morning. Yeah. Like this. It's hard work getting up this morning, lovely. Anybody else at the back want to say thank you? A lovely day. Thank you. Joanne. Thank you for everybody caring for me and Wonderful. Thank you so much. And you're so much part of this family, so it's wonderful to be able to, to care. Anybody else at the front want to say thank you? Vera, it's her birthday today. It She's is. 91 oh. today. <laughs> Happy birthday, Vera. <laughs> the bells. I'm not sure about bells. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, Alice. Thank you for being here. Wonderful, thank you. Well, last time we prayed and I said, was there anything that anybody wants to be sorry for? I want to be sorry for going through a red light. You'll be pleased to know I haven't done that since. <laughs> Perhaps I'm learning my lesson. I'm not going to ask you if there's anything that you, um, you, you're sorry for, but perhaps when we get to that bit in the prayers, we'll think about it. And are there things that you want to say please to God for? Anybody want to say please to God? Oh, yep. Yeah. Katrina. Please help me get the grades so I can get into bath. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back. I'll be back in a minute. Joe. Please hope our inspection goes off. Still, inspection goes well next week. Oh, <laughs> we will. I think somebody had their hand up here. Brian, I'm behind you. Please help some of our older members who are struggling a bit and, and can no longer come to church. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah? Jenny. Yeah. Okay. Big prayer, but really important, isn't it? Yeah, Alice. And I will pray. Pray to God. Yeah? You want to just say thank you to God? Yeah? And we'll say Let's pray and then we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. Father God, we thank you so much and we have so much to thank you for. We thank you for all these things that people have, have mentioned. We think of Joel's birthday party with his friend. We think of answered prayers. We think of birthday for Vera and for others. And we just thank you that you are a God who loves a God who sent Jesus, a God who gives the Holy Spirit, a God who gives this family that we're all part of. And, and Lord, we know there's lots for us to say sorry for. And just in a moment of quiet, we think of the, the things that we ourselves have done wrong this week. And we say sorry. Father, we know that when we truly mean it, we know that we're forgiven. And not only forgiven, but the thing that we were sorry for, you forget. Uh, and we rejoice and thank you. And we pray that you'll help us not to keep bringing it back to mind. And there is so much that we, we want to bring to you in prayer. We think about exams coming up uh, and inspections. We think of wars and violence and we just bring them all to you and say please Lord please God help us and may we help you to do all that we can in the name of Jesus Amen and we say together the words of the Lord's Prayer the words are on the screen Our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We're going to have our reading. Thank you, Mama. <laughs> the reading is from Paul's 
first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 12 to 27. And it's entitled, Unity and Diversity in the Body. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptised by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one Spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body was, were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honourable we treat with special honour. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honour to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Thank you, Alan. Now you are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ, and each one of us, each one of you, is part of it. When I was a little girl, I knew a song called the Hokey Cokey. Does everybody remember the Hokey Cokey? Now, I wonder if the, do the children know the Hokey Cokey. Do you? Fantastic. Because we're going to sing it. Led by the band. So, I'm going to invite the children to come to the front if you want to. Now, oh, I thought you were going to be a child and come to the front. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, do you all know the Hokey Cokey? Do you? Okay. So, right, well, we'll learn it. Goodness me, I will learn it. Right, so what we do, the band will lead us, but you put your right hand in, your right hand out, in, out, in, out, you shake it off, right. You do the hokey cokey and you turn around. That's what it's all about. So we're going to do it with our right hand, our left hand, our right leg, our left leg, and our whole body. Now, if you want to stay sitting for this, you can. But if you want to stand up and do it in your places, you're also very welcome to do that too. Is that all right? So if you're going to join in, you want to stand. So shall we face, turn and face the congregation? Do you want to turn around so everybody can see are you? Are we doing... Oh, okay. No, we'll not do this. We'll just do the, we'll just do the verses. Right. Over to you. Right, so just the verses, not the... Oh, okay. I feel neglected. <laughs> <laughs>
song today, you'll be singing it, I guarantee it, and you'll put the congrats on the chorus at another time. The point is, is it? Well, I knew you weren't it. All there, all day. So, what would happen if halfway through the song your arm said, I'm not going to be a left arm because I want to be a right foot? Or your head said, I'm not joining it because I don't want to be part of your body. How stupid would that be? It just wouldn't work, would it? If you were doing it and it suddenly, well, bits of you started flying off, it wouldn't work, would it? And, well, it, it wouldn't if you lost a leg. And you fell over because your leg didn't want to be a leg, it wanted to be an arm. And how would you look if you had a leg up here and an arm down there? And it's, it's daft, isn't it? Because it just wouldn't work. And, but we're all a family and some of us are gears. Some people in this congregation are really good at listening. Some people are mouths, really good at speaking. Some people have got big hearts, really good at loving and caring. We're all part of this wonderful family that God has given to us. So some of you might be preachers in years to come, or you might be teachers, or you might be people that open the doors on a Sunday night. Alice is really good at welcoming on a Sunday morning. Every one of us has got a job within this family, within this body. What I'm going to ask you to do, would you mind? I do, do you? I'm sure you do. I'm sure you're all really helpful at home. Would you like to draw me? I'm helpful at church and other places. Would you like to draw a picture for me? There's um, felt tips and there's pens in there. And on your picture, on your picture at the top, I want you to put my name is and write your name and then draw a picture of you. And underneath, but I am good at, okay, we'll leave those there for a few moments, but there's crayons, so my name is, a big picture of yourself, and I am good at, can you manage, can you get in? Let's just get her a piece of paper, thank you. Oh, you can thank you. We're all part of this family, this body that God has put us into. And every one of us has got gifts and abilities and skills. We're going to think a bit more about that in a few moments, but one of the greatest things about being part So we're going to stand, can I just leave that for a little bit longer? We'll come back to that in a minute. We'll have more to the song and I'll come back. 611. Brother, sister, let me sing with you. 611.
Tater family for me. This is the Tater family. And the Tater represents all the members of the Triangle Methodist Community Church. And every one of you, and myself included, we are all part of the Triangle Tater family. Now, I was going to give you all a potato to take home. It's a reminder, but there's a little good picture there, so hopefully that will help. So I want to tell you about some of the members of the Triangle Tater family. The first one is, well, let's see if you can guess. This person is always telling everybody else what they have to do, but they don't actually say it in a very nice way. And I'm not asking you for names, I'm asking you for names. <laughs> that would be dreadful, I wouldn't say anything. I'm not asking for names. What I'm asking is, any actual tone, this person is always telling other people what to do and how to behave and isn't very nice about it is called Dictator. Get it? Okay, so I've got some more for you. So let's see if you know these. This person sits on the sidelines and they watch everything that goes on and they've got a comment about everything, an opinion about everything. Any idea what they might be called? Spectator. Spectator. Oh, you've got it really quickly. Well done. Let's see. This person is just lovely and ordinary and joins in with everything and just... It's part of the church family. Participator. I can't say it. Participator. I'm going to tell you. Commentator. Oh, this person is always spoiling for a fight. Oh, always complaining, always moaning. Oh, they get you down. Any ideas? Agitator. Agitator. This person says, yeah, I'll help do that. And then when the time comes, they say, oh, I'm really sorry, can't do that at the moment, other things have come up. Any idea? Hesitator. Hesitator. Oh, doing well on this, time, this side. This person looks at Jesus and copies Jesus in their daily life. Imitator. Oh, this person just looks really miserable all the time. Potato. <laughs> this person's just there to, to help and they bring people together and they just do things. This facilitator. But you like it. Right. Um, participator, that we are all called to be participators. Now, you might recognise yourselves as one of them, and there might be others that you can think of, because a friend, um, I was telling them about this, he came up with somebody in church who, who is a lot of fun and makes everybody else enjoy church life, is a prestidigitator. <laughs> And does, if you know what, is anybody in this congregation a prestidigitator? Who is? Glenn, are you a prestidigitator? It's, it's somebody who can do magic tricks. Can you do magic tricks? Can you? Can you have you got one with you? You can do. All right, that's all right. I should have won, shouldn't I? But, it's, but we're all part of this Tater family. Um, where do you recognise yourself? I think one of the things, the things that are really key for me is that we are imitators of Christ, each and every one of us. Uh, for various reasons, that we imitate Christ in our daily lives so that other people think, why are they like that? And they learn more about Jesus. But for our children at the front and our children sat in our congregation, that they look at us as imitators of Christ and they imitate too. That we aren't spectators, that we are all participators. There's so much to do in the life of this church. You sometimes wouldn't believe how many people 
it takes just to keep the church going on a Sunday morning, and um, this list is nowhere near exhausted. You need a preacher, you need somebody to play the music, you need a worship leader, you need the technology, you need someone to open the door, someone to put the chairs out, you need someone to look after the children, you need someone to welcome, you need somebody in junior church, someone to grow up after, someone to count the money. It's dozens of people. And it's about us all using our gifts in church to make the family work well together. But about us finding out what our gift is from God and using it in our everyday life. So I wonder what God, God's gift is to you. What gift has God given you to use in your life? And what are you doing with it? I'm going to ask the children to show us their pictures. Have you all done your pictures? Have you done your pictures? Do you want to show us what? Have you not finished? Well, do you want to carry on? And we'll have a look at your pictures later. Sometimes we say we've not got a gift from God because, um, or we know we've got gifts from God, but actually all we can say is what we cannot do. And I suspect if I asked every one of you, you might struggle to say, well, I'm, I can do this, I'm good at that. Perhaps it's because of our nationality, who knows. But we can very quickly say what we know we're not good at. Now, it's a very bad thing to keep your school reports from when you were a child. But I've got that. And, and these are things that I'm not very good at. My, um, my needlework... My needlework teacher, when I was at term, says, has said, Hilary puts a fair amount of effort into her work. She is, however, a little slow. So I was never very good at needlework. And I can prove that because I was bought a tapestry. Salisbury Cathedral. I love Salisbury Cathedral. Um, and I've got about a quarter of way through it, but it's taken me 30 years to get it. <laughs> so my teacher knew what she was talking about, so I can tell you that needlework is not one of my gifts from God. I'll tell you what one of my other teachers wrote as well. And I wonder if you might know what the subject is. Hilary's work has been fairly good but she must take more care in her written work. It is superficial and inaccurate. Her examination results were not good. Any idea what you think my subject might have been? RE. <laughs> Which is... <laughs> I'll leave that to you. Good reports, I really did. I'll tell you what, two of my good reports. <laughs> Hilary has worked hard this year and she has made steady progress. She is particularly good at pottery. <laughs> My favourite, I have to say this is my favourite, quiet, industrious girl who produces conscientiously good results. If this is maintained, she will get a particularly good result and obtain a GCSE next year. And that was in typewriting. I was so thrilled. <laughs> it's one thing I can do. So we're very good at saying the sort of things we can't do. A few weeks ago for a service, I attempted to make flapjack. It was so inedible that I had to throw it out and nobody got a piece. Um, but sometimes when we aren't good at something, other people are really good. And I think when we use all our gifts and skills together, sometimes we might not be good at something, but somebody else is brilliant at it. So why would we stress and strain and get worked up about something that we're not good at? So I'm not good at flapjack, but I know two ladies in the congregation who are. So this morning we've got flapjack. Oh, that's perch. That's perch. 
So after the service, there is flapjack. And uh, you might have to share, but that's part of being a church family. So uh, my thank you to Susan, and it smells absolutely delicious. I'm going to leave it open there. And my thanks to Chris, who's also made flapjack. So you can probably smell it and leave it open. So uh, you wouldn't want to eat my flapjack because I would want you to be ill. And everybody tells me it's really simple. But this piece of flapjack for you from some pink ladies who are really, really good at it. But there are things that we are all good at. I've got, um, I've got certificates. Oh, wonderful gosh, in a minute. And medals for being disco dancing. <laughs> so you, we're all good at things. What is it that God is saying to you? You know, you, Glenn, you've got this special gift, you've got this special ability. Cedric, you are brilliant at doing this. Doreen, you are wonderful at doing this sort of thing, and I've given you this gift. And what are we doing with the things that God has given to us? What are the gifts that God is saying to us to share within our church family, but to share with those people that we meet every single day of the week who might never come to church, but perhaps just want somebody to listen to them. Or perhaps just want somebody to speak to them because they've not spoken to someone for hours and hours and days and days. Perhaps you need somebody like Katrina who raises the awareness of climate change. Or somebody like Joel who goes to a friend's birthday party and brings joy through doing that. Or Alice who welcomes on the door and always says every week, have you got a job I can do? Or Claudia who sang at the Nativity at Christmas. Or well, all of you, what are the gifts and skills that God has given you to do? So, you've drawn some fantastic pictures. So let's have a look at what we've got. Henry, let's have a look at your picture. So what does it say? My, My name is Henry. And then what does that say? God is our God. God is our God. And that's... That's your picture. And what are you good at? Uh, I'm good at maths. You're good at maths at school? Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. And have you drawn some good more? At pictures as well. You are good at pictures. Those are wonderful. Should we turn them around so everybody can see? And I still might take a picture. You'll need to hold the pictures. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Oscar, what have you got? I'm not finished. Okay. Who else has done what? Olivia, have you got what? Well, I'll tell you what, maybe you, have you finished yours? Do you want to show us? Do you want to turn that so everybody can see? What does it say? My, my name is... Oh. You're okay? My name is Faith. And what, sort of, is... and what sort of things are you good at? I'm good at playing. You're good at playing? I'm sure you are. I bet you've got the most amazing imagination that helps you play really creatively, hasn't she? I'm sure she has. That's absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. What does yours say? My name is... My name is Ruben. I'm good. And what sort of things are you good at?
We're going to, the children are going to lead us, so if you want to leave all your felt tips and your papers there, and we're going to stand together, and the children are going to lead us in our actions with our walking, walking, walking for the Lord. So can all the children come to the front please, because um, uh, the adults don't know this one, and so you won't have to uh, show them. So if you can all uh, come to the front to do the, um, do the actions, because uh, you, you all know it very well, because we sing it in, uh, in junior church uh, quite a lot. So, so what uh, what we're going to do? Um, uh, the children and the band are going to sing it uh, the first verse through once, so everybody else knows it. Um, and then after that, if you can all stand up and sing and do the actions. And the first verse is walking, the second verse is jumping, and the second uh, uh, verse is clapping. So I'm sure you can all manage all that lot. So um, good for the knees. <laughs> study guide um, on Friday morning it was um, the writer was writing about Solomon Grundy and it took me back to being a child and um, I'm sure some of you will remember the, um, the, the little rhyme about Solomon Grundy Solomon Grundy born on a Monday christened on a Tuesday married on Wednesday took ill on Thursday through white Worse on Friday, died, buried on Sunday, and that was the end of Solomon Grundy. And it, it made me, me think when I read it, you know, that's a, a sad existence, isn't it? To just be born and go through life and, and, and at the end of it die. When Jesus said, I have come to give you life in all its fullness. One of my teachers wrote on my reports, you only get out of life what you put into it. And Jesus said, I have come to give you life in all its fullness. Every single one of us have just got so much great potential. We've all got so many things that we can do that God gives us. We've got love, 
we've got the ability to listen, the ability to care, the ability to share. And I wonder what God is saying to you that your gift is. I wonder what you can do, what we can do. And sometimes it might mean giving something up because we're doing too much. It might mean giving something up because we're not working within our gifting. It might mean taking on something different or something else. You can in a second, sweetheart. It might mean taking on something different or something that we've never tried before. And it might, we might think, I've never done that. I couldn't sing in church or in the band. Um, but actually, perhaps that is what the gift is that God has given you. Perhaps he's calling you to be a worship leader or a local preacher or is calling you to ordained ministry, or is calling you because of something that's happened in your life to reach out and help other people. What's God calling you to do? And when we respond and say, yes, God, we really do find our full potential and we really do live life in all its fullness. Now, God bless you as you discern what your gift is and that you respond to God with that yes. I'm going to invite the children who've not shown their pictures. I want to show us a second one to do that. And then we will have our prayers. Well, does anybody else want to show us their picture? Yeah? I know you are. <laughs> right, moving off you go. What are you good at? It's for cousin. cousin. Yeah, your cousin. <coughs> and he's called Linus in a scribbled room because he likes scribbling. That's all. I can do scribbling, so that's all I can do. Thank you, that's really lovely. Will you take that home for him? Thank you, Henry. Yeah. And I thank you for the food that we have making our kitchen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your prayer. You're good at prayer. Espoir Shy. <laughs> and this is my name is Espoir. I am good at football and I am good at praying. Isn't that wonderful? You're all so talented. Anybody else before us? Dennis to pray for us. I think have we done Oscars? I think we've done Oscars. Oh, but he says he's good at golf. <laughs> One? No, okay. Alright, we'll put them up on board anyway. We're going to, Dennis is going to lead our prayers. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, we come to you this morning with our prayers for us. We pray for those in our congregation who are ill or are suffering the difficulties of later life. May they feel your spirit within them, giving them strength and peace. We come to you asking for prayer for those studying for their exams at school or college. They might be feeling overwhelmed by it all and lose faith in their abilities. Help them to see the way ahead and remain at their studies. We pray for those people without homes, people both near and far. For those people in Australia who are now having to live with floods after being devastated by the bushfires. And also we pray for those in Bolton who have no home, they sleep outside or are going from place to place. Be with them and those who seek to help them. We pray for our ministers in this circuit as they try to come to terms with an increased workload. May they find the energy to continue to work as they would hope to. We pray for the very we pray for those in this church who teach our young people the Bible and about Jesus and the young people themselves. May they find God and be blessed by his Spirit. Finally, Father, please be with all those wherever they are who suffer for their faith in you. May they continue to worship or in fellowship together, no matter how dangerous that may be. We ask these prayers for others, knowing that you heal and bless them, warming their hearts and giving them strength to continue in life 
with love and compassion themselves. And Father, we offer this prayer to you in your name. Amen. Um, just to, we're going to take the offering in a moment and to say if you are visiting us this morning, please do not feel that you um, have to give money into our offering. It is a free will offering for those who, who wish to give, so please do not feel obliged to give. Just got a couple of notices for you. Um, we have some spare bean bags that we would like to give away, so if anybody is interested, perhaps uh, one of the, the children or one of the families would like some bean bags. If you speak to Colin afterwards, there are, um, there are some bean bags and he can arrange for you to take a bean bag home with you. Um, and at the end of February, I think it's the, um, it's the week after half term, the Tuesday after half term, we're starting um, English as a second language lessons in the Triangle on a Tuesday from 1 till 3 o'clock. Um, it's quite amazing uh, the way that this has come around. But it's just a wonderful opportunity for people within our congregation who do not, um, whose English needs to improving for helping them to be able to come along and to learn um, English. Carla, who's going to teach them, um, is wonderful and so caring. So that will be fantastic, um, and that will be open to anybody from the congregation or anybody that you might know from Johnson Fold or the local area who'd like to learn English as a second language. And perhaps if you'd like to volunteer, anybody can come along and volunteer to help. Just to be there, to support, uh, to be a part of that little group. And it might be that that is your gift, that you could come along on a Tuesday afternoon and just be part of that group that we meet. If you want some more details, I can let you know. God is good. God is generous and kind and gives his love freely to us. And in response, we freely give the money that we have, the stewards all made to us. with us 24 7 and our response is to give you back our gifts our gifts of money our time our talents and all that we have use each one of us to use these gifts to build your kingdom here in this place for in the name of jesus we pray amen
going to close our worship as we sing, you shall go out with joy. And do we do it three times through? Three times through. And then welcome to stay for tea and coffee and flapjack, please. Have a nice Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Be with us all, evermore. Amen.